All right, readers, it is time to crack open a great book. And today I have such a treat for everybody. I know a lot of you have already got a copy of his book on your bookshelves and are anxiously awaiting the latest edition, Thomas Erickson. Does that name ring a bell? He's an internationally best-selling author, and he's designed a simple color-coded behavior analysis system to help revolutionize your experience of the workplace and perhaps your life. I hear people around the world are talking about whether or not they can stay with a yellow person or hang out with a blue person. We're going to find out more about this book written for both bosses and employees alike, a book that provides a guide to navigating all sorts of situations and improving interactions between bosses and colleagues and indeed between any two human beings. We're thrilled to welcome to read Thomas Erickson, author of the book that we're looking at today. Day, surrounded by bad bosses and lazy employees. Thomas, how are you doing? Thank you. I am absolutely great today. I'm very happy to be with you. I'm very excited to be honest. And uh, yes, I'm all yours. Absolutely fabulous. Can you help us understand the four main color-coded personality types? I guess the key question is, what are these typologies based on? If you go really way back in time, it's based on the American psychologist uh, Marston's theories about, uh, well, four, four different kinds of behaviors, actually. He actually didn't step into personality psychology because that's really, really complicated. Uh, he mm -hmm. didn't create the system himself. He just laid a foundation for it. And then some, some guy called uh, Clark uh, uh, constructed the vector analysis in the 50s. And, and the development has been going on even, even, even since. And I would say in the early, late 60s, early 70s, I would say, we actually found the disk analysis, which we added the colors on top of because, well, of pedagogical reasons, actually. The development has been taking place within the business industry, let's call it. So we don't mm -hmm. know exactly everything. It's not, it has not gone through university and traditional, let's say, uh, research and science, if you would like to mm -hmm. call it that. But um, is it, is it yes. based on the Myers-Briggs system in any way? No, they are not, conne not connected, even though they have similarities. They do, because, I mean, the human mind is the human mind. You have extroversion, introversion, you have task orientation, uh, let's say relation orientation. So that's never going to change, but it's actually working in different ways. I am licensed on Myers-Briggs as well. However, I prefer this method because it's easier to, to deal with. It's easier to remember red and yellow character instead of a high D over an I with a low C or, or an ENTJ personality type. Or oh, sorry, yeah, it is easier. Was it I ITPK? What was it? You know, it's red and yellow. <laughs> it, it's 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 simpler for me. It's simpler. Maybe I'm. Yeah. <laughs> it is quite like memorable, it. definitely. I wonder if you can take us through the four main color types. So it's red and yellow and blue, and is it green? It's green. It is indeed. There yes. Well, well, if we combine extroversion and task orientation, you have the red dominant factor. Uh, quick, uh, very decisive, very, let's say, uh, competitive, uh, fast forward, you know, quick thinkers, bam, bam, action, 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 all the time, all the time, thought, action, boom, 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 all the time. Uh, really striving, uh, needs to see results. Could be some people might perceive them a bit let's say a bit harsh, a bit hard even on, on some people, because they are very straightforward. They say it as it is, meaning what they think, mm -hmm. to be honest, which might not be the same thing, but very, very strong will. So you, you have a hard time to actually convince them about anything. You have to be well prepared in that case. Uh, the other extroverted uh, type is the yellow one, but they are not task oriented. They are relation oriented or people. It's the people's people, let's call it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they they are positive and open minded, also action oriented, but they have to talk a bit first before they can act and, and, and do things. So they, 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 they when, when they are thinking, it goes not from thought to action, but from thought to, to words. So they have to tell you, well, I have this thought in my head now. So they, 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 the, the lid in the front is open all the time. It's very interesting and fascinating and very charming and very, very sociable, very likable. A lot of people like them because they are, you know, positive, always smiling, you know, in a good mood all the time. They, they, uh, 
they see possibilities, they see opportunities, and they, they, they can see the positive in the world. They see the beauty and the sun is always shining. Even if you say, well, it's actually raining. Yes, but the sun is always shining somewhere, <laughs> you know, in Singapore. Not at least. So that's that type. What do we have then? And then we have the green ones going over to the introverted side. Calmer, more, more soft-spoken. Uh, introverted and and uh, people oriented which is the green ones and they are they are uh, very friendly very helpful very into to you know not taking room from anybody else, not not stealing the oxygen they don't like to be in the center of things the yellow ones they love the center but the green ones no no they prefer to be a little bit to the side you know because uh, who am i to tell you what to do excellent listeners x they actually hear what you say and they will actually mm. remember what you said oh yes especially if it was something bad that's going to be you know registered and, and put in shelf 1a for the whole eternity that is just the way it is uh, good team players because they are into cooperation they are wired for cooperating with anybody so they will actually get out of their way just to make everything work as smoothly as possible they don't like changes. Changes is, ooh, that's scary. Why change things? I mean, this is good, right? And it was better before. Well, it was cheaper and sunnier and, and people were friendlier and nicer. And well, some, some guy actually, when I was, I give public talks, but pre, you know, what? I promised myself not to say that word, so I'm not going to say it, but, you know. The, All right, neither will I. The, the, not the new C word, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, pre that, at least, I was giving public talks, you know, three, four times a week. And usually, actually, what the last, uh, the last talk I gave, uh, actually, when I described this, it was better before uh, mentality. One man, this, this was in Germany, in Europe, uh, in Berlin, and he was shouting over the heads of a thousand people sitting in the back, obviously because green people don't like to be at the front. He was shouting, I don't know if it was better before, but I know it's worse now. So that's <laughs> kind of the green mentality, you know. So anyways, and then what we have left there, where we had the blue character, right? Which is, you know, uh, introversion and task orientation, which gives you somebody interested in analysis details accountants, engineers, uh, the tax sheriffs, you know, the lawyers maybe into details, neurosurgeons, you know, into the tiniest, tiniest details. How do you know this? Can you prove what you just said? They need to have proofs for everything. And they love Excel sheets, you know. Uh, they, they don't talk much unless you can invite them into an interesting discussion. They really are, 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 are well, where they think they can contribute. They can be mm. silent for so long and stone-faced. They can deliver really dramatic uh, uh, news like uh, your house just burned down. Don't kill the messenger. I'm just reporting here. Because they are done. They're not... On the surface, they are not very emotional. They have emotions just like anybody else, but they, they're not going to show it to the world. So they are kind of turned off, it looks like it. But they are constantly thinking and approving things. Uh, they, are, they're, uh, they, they like to implement strategies and, and uh, techniques that will help you uh, increase the quality, because quality matters. If somebody tells the blue person, well, we don't have time for that, we have to, you know, uh, hurry up here. Well. <laughs> Time is relative, as you know, Einstein said in his famous talk in 1933, you know, so, so that, that's what's going to happen. So you can't, you can't hurry them, you can, you can just wait and see. Where this We're goes. speaking with Swedish behavioral expert and internationally best-selling author Thomas Erickson. Thomas, you know, I think people listening to that think I know a lot of people who fit into one of those categories. But here is a question for you. You know, with things evolving like the internet, a lot of people feel when they're dating, for example, the person they met on Tinder through the text is just not the person who turns up on a date. They think, I've seen you through this screen and you seem one way, but then I meet you in person and you're a psychopath or you're completely different. So do you think that these screens that we interact through can veil or bring out different aspects of the personality. So I guess the question is, how fixed are we in being a blue or a green or a yellow? 
That's an excellent question, and it's, it, it's, it's going to take me. How, how much time do we have? <laughs> but the take thing your is, time. <laughs> I mean, humans are complex. The human mind is complex, right? I mean, everything we do comes from the brain, and the human brain is possibly, possibly the most complex organ nature has provided us with. Actually, that is actually the truth. We really don't know how it's how it's working. We know a lot. But we are missing probably much, much more, I would say, at least. Uh, the thing with, when it comes to personality, it sh the personality shows in your behaviors. And the colors is measuring the behaviors. And to begin with, you're not usually not only red, yellow, green, or blue. That's just one ingredient. Usually, you have a combination of two. It could also be three, as with yours truly. Um, the thing is, we have also different faces that we show. Yes. We, are, we have this official face. I'm showing you now my official, me. this is me officially. Then when I turn off the camera and, and switch off the, the microphone, I will go out for lunch and be probably mostly me. However, I will go to a restaurant. So how much myself will I actually be? I have to adapt to that situation as well. Of course, because, hey, I, I, I'm not a hermit. I have to actually keep myself in control if you know we adapt to new situations all the time and so we have what psychologists call different masks that we put on when we are in mm -hmm. different situations uh, the best way for a person to let's say to present him or herself to the world would be to be as close to his or her true nature as possible because then you don't have to pretend anymore you don't have to play a role when it comes to dating and Tinder in Sweden, I mean, I'm from the Northern Europe, as you might know, uh, up here. You know, we have Heathway now, but anyways, otherwise we are kind of introverted here. A lot of people are, are, are green and blue here because of culture. So, so we behave in an introvert way. But on Tinder in Sweden, people have actually started to put their colors up there. This is actually oh, wow. not a joke. So they say, I am green and blue. So there, as long as you're not lying, hopefully you're not, uh, then you have been open and then t people can actually interpret, okay, green and blue, then I know what I'm supposed to meet. I don't like green and blue, I prefer yellow and green. Oh, there's somebody who's yellow and green. It's just an example, it could be any colors, obviously. Uh, but the thing is, dating, is so, so long time ago since I was dating, as you can see on my <laughs> face, that was, did you laugh now? <laughs> but the, 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 pro the problem is, I, re I really don't remember how that was, but I do remember when I was a young man, of course, I tried to, to, to you know, sh present myself the best possible way, the most open-minded person, positive and, 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 you know, charming and everything. Um, well, if I, if I managed to, to win, win the girl over to my side and we were continuously dating, then I would probably go back to be me, which I think is the case with all, most people. Uh, but it's always going to be a challenge. It's an, an interesting one because you are also drawn to opposites. Opposites attract, we, we usually say. So red ones are drawn to green ones and blue ones are drawn to, to yellow ones and, and vice versa. But then you have to live with them. And <laughs> that's probably more, more of a challenge because now you have to live with somebody who's thinking the wrong way, you know, wrong, wrong, but different from me. So I, I guess when you mention masks, the thing that comes up where masks are, are most obvious, I think, is in the criminal world where you think, how could this family man go and do this to someone? Now, your book, Surrounded by Bad Bosses, is only going to be available in bookstores here after the 9th of August. But your other book, Surrounded by Psychopaths, is already available. So people might have, have it on their bookshelves here. Now, I wonder if you can share with the listeners what's different what did you want to make a, a big distinction with in terms of the two books, Surrounded by Psychopaths and this new book, Surrounded by Bad Bosses? Because a lot of uh, psychopaths do tend to end up at the top of the C-suite, for example. It's true. And that is actually the bad news when it comes to psychopathy. Well, as you can see behind me there, there you can see Surrounded by Idiots and there you can see Surrounded by, by Psychopaths. The white book I wrote because I wanted to spread the message that people are different, which we all know, but it's actually not, it doesn't have to be extremely complicated. If you just learn the basics on how to interpret different behaviors, you can actually do much, much better. You don't have to have, let's say, unnecessary conflicts. I'm not against conflicts. That could be fruitful, definitely. 
uh, but unnecessary conflicts based on miscommunications and misunderstandings that just takes time. I don't have time for that. But after that book was on the market, people start emailing me saying, "How this is a good system. Now I want want it to to in to, to learn it better so I can use other people." And for me, that was kind of what do you mean use other people? And I had a strange encounter with a young man at the university after after a public talk that I had given there. And then I realized some people are actually out to manipulate each other. Of course, I knew that at the back of my head, but I haven't considered it. And then I started to, to, to do research on manipulation and I fell backwards straight into psychopathy. And that is that is a scary world. That is an ugly thing. Psychopathy is really, really scary and dangerous and, and, it, it, and, and disgusting at the same time. Because there are a lot of psychopaths and most of them are not serial killers. Most of them are not behind bars. The stupid ones, the unintelligent ones, they are locked up because they see somebody with a beautiful watch and they're gonna, they knock him on the head and take the watch. The intelligent ones, they, they walk up to the guy with the watch and say, hey, that's a beautiful watch. And then they will make him hand it over. That is what psychopaths do. And that skill is a very special something. And when you have mastered and fine-tuned that skill, then you can go really, really far. And that's what we can see in, in, in top hi hierarchies. Because the higher up in the hierarchy in any organization, it could be in the business world, it could be in, within politics, it could be in military, it could be in, let's say, even if you work, you know, just contributing free, your free time, you know, because you, you like to give things, you know, Red Cross or, or Doctors Without Borders, anything. In these organizations, psychopaths tend to rise, actually, because they are so good with, you know, finding the right stepping stone and just and I've seen it and you've seen it as well we have all seen it and then sometimes we actually say to ourselves how come he got so far because it's usually a he it's usually a man that's more common uh, because it's usually why? easier I think for some psychopaths if you don't have um, a conscience so to speak or you know you don't have that moral th tethers holding you back from choosing this or choosing that, it's actually much easier, I think. Exactly, exactly. To do what you Spot need on. to do. Mm. Exactly. They, they realize what they need to do, not what they should do or, or mm. should not do. Because if they see something they want, they're just going to take it. I mean, the whole world is, is just an open buffet for, for the psychopaths. The, 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 the scientists, the psychologists who actually do the research on this very, very narrow field, I mean, not all psychologists understand this, uh, but they say somewhere between 2 and 4% of the population, we know, let, well, let's say 2% is, would be diagnosed with, uh, as a clinical psychopath. 2% out of how many people are we now? Is it 7 billion? Is it 8 billion? I don't know, but it's hundreds of millions of psychopaths, which is a really scary for, thought. But that also explains, sometimes it actually explains why the world is looking as it is. Makes a lot of sense. And, you know, if you haven't read that book, you should pick it up. Surrounded by Psychopaths, already available on bookshelves here in Singapore. We are talking to Thomas Erickson, author of Surrounded by Bad Bosses and Lazy Employees. Now, that's going to be available August 9th, right here on our bookshelves. And it's so fascinating to think of the different personality types. Now, we know that there's a lot of stereotypes that are associated with personalities. Oh, she's an introvert. She's going to be quiet at the meeting. And, and that those stereotypes can lead to a lot of mistrust. So how do you think we can overcome some of these biases that are linked to personality types? And does your book offer any solutions? Yes, yes. Uh, I mean, look, uh, biases is one thing. Uh, we think we understand. Now we heard somebody said this and now you said the same thing. Then you're probably like that other person, which is just stupid. Usually it is it is, it, it is a lack of knowledge. We don't understand. When, let's say, if I do this towards you, how do you react now when I frown my face like this? Yeah, it I could feel mean uncomfortable. Anything. I feel like you're disagreeing or you're exactly, angry with me. Exactly, exactly. Mm. 
Exactly, but you base that on your own perception and your own, let's say, experience and how you would do it because you do this. You're frowning with your face when you are frustrated or maybe even angry, right? However, mm -hmm. that is correct when it comes to reds and yellows. If you have a red or yellow boss or manager, leader doing this, it's a bad sign. However, if you have a blue one who's doing this, it means that he's really focused and concentrating and really listening to you now. Now what you're saying is really interesting. That's why he looks like this. So it only has to do with knowledge. And the more you understand, I mean, this is a no-brainer. The more you understand, the easier you will, let's say, communicate and interact with basically anyone, at least better than before. If you understand, that was just one signal out of, I don't know, a hundred thousand signals maybe. So that, that's my aim. And when it comes to leadership and management, of course, the different cultures in different parts of the world, I, I understand that. In Sweden, we have one specific way of, of leading people, which is, which is working, which maybe doesn't work in Australia or in, 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 in Singapore, I don't know. But People mm -hmm. are always people. Humans are humans. There is not so many places left in the world where you can just stand up and shout and people will say, oh, yes, absolutely. There are some places left. I, I understand that. I'm not naive. I, I, I get that. However, the better you can communicate and reach out to somebody and make him or her say, aha, now I get it, the smoother it's going to get and you will much, much quicker get the result you want. That's the key because you need results, because going to work isn't a playground, it's not a kindergarten, you have to achieve results. And if people is doing the right things immediately, you will get the results much quicker. That's where communication comes in. Is there a way we can identify our boss's personality type? I mean, if we're talking about widening our vocabulary to interpreting um, gestures by understanding whether you're red or a blue or green or a yellow, how can I identify what my boss is? observe him or her you just watch them what they do and you listen to them carefully you 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 you, you well you you even i mean you observe body language because the body language is generic that works the same thing all over the world even though there are certain gestures that means different things but an open a yellow boss will always move his hands more than the green one or the blue one the blue one who is looking like this all the time you know checking the Excel sheet and see mm, this is not according to, to you know, the detail and the plan we have here. Or the red one who is the quickest one to raise his voice and start to, to you know, be a bit uh, uncomfortable to, to his stuff or her stuff. Uh, you can just observe, you can see how they are talking. Do you know anything about them personally? A yellow or a green one who is relation oriented will always leak some personal data about themselves. You will know if they are married, if they have children, if they have a dog or a cat or whatever. You will know this because they have told you in some conversation. If it's a blue one or a red one, you won't know because they won't talk about it because they are not here to make friends. You know, there are hundreds of ways to do. You have to be observed. You can't just walk around thinking, I hope, I hope this state's going to be okay. No, 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 no. That's not what you do. What you do is you be observant. And then when you understand who your boss is, then you can adapt to him or her in order to get, well, the smoothest possible dialogue between the two of you. To sort of step Make out sense? of your preconceived notions of who that person is and just observe for a start. And of course, use this book as your guide, I think. Uh, do you have tips for us to ensure good communication, regardless of personality types? Because we know that, you know, no one color is better than the other. I'm sure the blue is not better than the yellow. Um, so are there things that we can do so we can communicate smoothly, regardless of what color we are? It is. I mean, the starting point is, so let, let's say, let, let's say, just an example. Telling, telling you a story here, but, but if, if, you, if I would like to go to Singapore, I've never been there, I would love to come and see it because I have seen pictures and it's fascinating. Let's say I call my travel agency, not that we do that anymore, but let's say for the sake of argument, I call my travel agency and I say, get me a ticket to Singapore. They will say, no problem. And then they will say, from where would you like to go? Just imagine me saying, never mind that. Don't be so problem focused, now get me the ticket. How will they solve this situation? They're going to say, you're crazy. We need, are you going from Stockholm or from London or, or New York or, or Sydney or from where are you going? 
they have to have the starting point and the finishing point. You have to have two dots on the map in order to communicate going by airplane or train or boat or whatever. If you don't know the starting point and the destination, you, you just go moving around in circles. Uh, we don't have time for that. The same thing goes for communication between human beings. You need to understand the starting point and that is always you. That is always yourself, which means you need to understand where you are, which means you need to understand yourself. You have to understand, are you a red or a red and yellow or a yellow or a yellow and green or blue or, or, or whatever kind of combination there might be? Do you know how we see you? When you look yourself in the mirror, do you see what we see? Usually you don't. That's the key yeah. here. Because self-awareness is not very common. There's been a lot of studies. I, I read these recent studies within the EU here in, in Europe, and they, and they, there, ninety-five percent of people claimed they have a high self-awareness, and then they checked this with a three-sixty analysis. Very interesting. Turns out, ten to fifty percent, maybe. Ooh, so eighty percent they don't have a clue. They don't know how we perceive them when they present themselves. It's a huge difference. But if you know how we see you, then you know what you have to do. If you know you have a boss that is, let's say, green, and you just go on and bam, 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 shout and yell and, and, and show discomfort or whatever, it's going to be a bad conversation. You're not going to reach each other at all, actually. So start with yourself before you try to understand anybody else. And re just imagine how hard it is to change yourself. I mean, we know it's almost impossible to change yourself. So don't expect that you can change somebody else. It's not going to happen. But we can learn to live together. That sounded lovely now, didn't it? But we can actually do that. But we have to actually make an effort, I would say. So fascinating. Readers, I'm sure you want to hear more of Thomas Erickson, but we have to let him go to lunch. So pick up his book, author of Surrounded by Bad Bosses and Lazy Employees. My guest today in Read, Thomas Erickson. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Money FM 89.1